Hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy, and governance. I am Shapiu Suleiman. Now, Section 14, Subsection 2B and 18, Subsection 3A of the 1999 Constitution as amended clearly provide for the primary functions of every responsible government to guarantee the security, welfare, and basic education to its citizens to whom sovereignty belongs, meaning they can hire and fire those who superintend their affairs if they fail to perform during periodic elections. However, despite these provisions and many more enshrined in the Constitution to guarantee good governance and leadership accountability, governments at both national and subnational levels have failed to ensure these provisions leading to loss of precious lives as a result of hunger, insecurity, and rising cases of attacks and abduction of innocent young students aspiring, rather seeking for knowledge. While enforcement of the identified fundamental rights to security, the welfare, and at least basic education remain problematic due to lack of clear-cut leadership accountability mechanisms, this misnomer has negatively affected the nation's quest for quality education, security of lives and welfare of the people generally. It is against this backdrop we'll be interfacing with Comrade Emmanuel Onwubeku. He is the National Coordinator of Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa. He is also the former National Commissioner of Nigeria's National Human Rights Commission, on the challenges militating against effective enforcement of these rights for the benefit of the citizens. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Now, before we commence the conversation, here are some tidbits. Now, the Senate was in a rowdy session today after a revelation by Senator Jarigbe Jarigbe, PDP Cross River North, that all ranking senators got the sum of 500 million naira. Jarigbe stated, this at the plenary during the debate of the motion on breach of privilege moved by Senator Lamileko Nadeola. Senator Adeola had come under orders 9, 10, and 41, and 51 to move a motion of privilege and issue of national importance against Senator Abdul Nengi over his interview with the British Broadcasting Corporation House of Services. Senator Ningi had in an interview with the British Broadcasting Corporation House of Service on Saturday alleged that the budget passed by the National Assembly for the 2024 fiscal year is 25 trillion naira, while the one being implemented by the presidency is 28.7 trillion naira. The senator has been suspended for three months over that claim. Now, a prominent Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi has renewed his call for the federal government to go into negotiations with bandits in a bid to secure the release of abducted Nigerians. In a statement, the cleric said he was willing to facilitate comprehensive discussions between the federal government and the bandits. Sheikh Gumi told President Bola Tinubu not to repeat the mistake made by Buhari, who refused to open a channel of dialogue. He was reacting after the Kaduna state government's rejection to engage in talks with the bandits who kidnapped 287 students from Kuriga Government Secondary School and LEA Primary Schools in Chukul local government area last week. And lastly, former President Muhammad Buhari has said his successor, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has performed very well since his assumption of office nine months ago. The ex-president said there is nothing much anyone can do given the prevailing circumstances as Nigeria is a complex country to govern. Now, Buhari said this when he received the Controller General of Customs, Bashura Diwali Adini, and members of the management team of the Nigeria Customs Service, NCS, in Daura, Katana State, at the weekend. And now, we take a short break, and when we come back, the conversation commences. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying with us. And once again, welcome, Comrade Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Now, before we engage in the uh, topic of discussion, let's look at these tidbits, uh, starting with the first one. You know, um, the Senate today was okay. in a rowdy session. You've had it, you know, over this uh, allegation of budget padding. 
to the tune of 3.7 trillion naira by Senator Abdul Nigi. Now, finally, after all the altercations and what have you, and, and, and you know, the, the Senate decided to suspend Senator Abdul Nigi over this claim. Uh, what's your reaction to the development in the Senate today? Well, um, what took place today, what transpired today in the Senate, is what a lot of Nigerians uh, would have expected, mm -hmm. because the Senate, over time, has proven not to be um, a democratic setting where their members are allowed to express their opinions freely. Uh, it looks like um, uh, it's, it's a kind of a, a, a theater where the dramatis personnel, I mean the, the individuals, the characters. These are, um, these are lawmakers or distinguished senators, they call them. Well, well we, yeah, they're supposed to be distinguished senators, but they have not been able to show uh, a kind of um, leadership that Nigerians expected from them. Okay. Because if a member of the Senate chamber raised a very massive allegation against that institution. What Nigerians expected from the body is to at least hear the senator out. You don't use blackmail. You don't use intimidation. You don't, the Senate president ought not to have, you know, applied a sledgehammer to try to harass, you know, try to harass and in, intimidate uh, Senator Ningi into either submission, admission, or apology. Why is he asking him to apologize? Apologize for what? Mm. What the, what but, the but, Senate but, should but have been referring to? the Senate, uh, the, um, yes. Senator Ningi was given um, the opportunity to speak out, even though he stood up, uh, you know, on his ground that, uh, yes, he has proof, you know. Yes, what the Senate ought to have done, since he claimed that he has the proof, mm. Senate ought to have set up a, a committee. It was the same Senate that set up a committee not over 24 hours ago to investigate the, uh, you know, indiscriminate printing of uh, 30 trillion naira by the immediate past mm, government. The ways and means. Yeah. Yes, ways and means, uh, uh, you know, loans that mm. were obtained by the CBN. So if that can be done, why didn't the Senate set up a panel? Mm. The, Senate, the Senate even has a standing a committee, committee yeah. for public complaints, public complaints committee, because the allegation that has been raised against the Senate mm. is a matter of public uh, national importance, uh, importance. Yeah. is a matter that touches on the lives, the governance uh, structures of the country. It's a very serious matter. Mm. But it appears Senator Ningi was left on his own, you know, after, uh, even though he also retracted that he was not speaking on behalf of the Northern Senators Forum, he was speaking for himself. And uh, he owned up to that, that it is his own opinion. Uh, but then we've seen how, you know, even members of that, that forum, who initially, um, some would think, uh, may perhaps support him or ask for, I mean, thorough investigation, backed out and were also uh, seen to be, uh, I mean, should I say intimidated by, uh, by the aura of the Senate president? I, I want to look at it from the point of view of the Senator Ningi himself hmm. jumping the gun. Hmm. Probably... He wasn't supposed to make those disclosures at the time he made it. Mm. Because from the views that were expressed by Senator Ningi mm. in that interview with BBC, mm. he, he, he made it very clear yeah. that the, 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 the forum, mm. the Northern Senators Forum, hired experts. Yes. So it's not something that started today. So it's something mm. that a group must have sat somewhere and decided they were going to do. I'm sure it's not Senator Ningi's decision yeah. to hire consultants. Mm. So Could it, be that it was those consultants that found out the, the, the pattern, yeah. the discrepancy between the, 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 the budgets that it, were, uh, was passed yeah. and the one that was being implemented. So what we expected the senators to have done today was to set up a committee to ascertain the veracity or otherwise mm. of those, you know, a, a grand swell of allegation that was made against the Senate. Mm. So suspending Senator Ningi mm. is a is what they 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 are actually thinking that they have actually achieved a perfect cover up, but they ended up disgracing themselves because 
Nigerians are wiser. Nigerians know exactly what has happened. Mm. That is just a method that is like the best form of attack mm. is... Uh, defense. Oh, yes. The mm. best form of defense yeah, attack. is attack. That's right. So the best way you can intimidate uh, a person making an allegation against you, whether you are right or wrong, mm -hmm. is to try to intimidate him into silence. That's mm -hmm. exactly what they have succeeded in doing today. Mm -hmm. But I hope and pray that Senator Ningi should not allow himself to be totally overwhelmed. Mm. Okay, now while that uh, is, being, <laughs> is happening, you know, yes. if, if actually they're trying to silence Ningi, yes. um, another kind of worm, you know, was open on the floor of the Senate when another Senator, Jaribe Jaribe, now came up with an allegation, another fundamental allegation that <clears throat> 500 million naira was actually uh, given to the leadership, if you like, or, or the, the, is it the principal officers now uh, of, of the Senate, um, as against what was given to others, that's 200 million naira. Okay, constituency project. Constitu oh, right, is it constituency project? Okay. He called it palliatives, isn't it? Okay. So, so if, if, I mean, but then that was not also allowed to see the light of the day somehow, uh, because there was an attempt perhaps to also uh, take away the, uh, the issue from public. Uh, do, you, do you see another round of uh, <laughs> a, a, a controversy here? Well, when the senators allowed themselves to be, uh, I don't want to use that word, but over, but they were actually either um, by some ways that some of us do not understand what must have transpired in the middle of the night, when they allowed themselves to get, uh, to get God's will of Abio as their Senate president, what do you expect? God's will of Abio was virtually imposed on that Senate by Mr. President. So Nigerians shouldn't even expect well, Senator any Senator Adiola said 60% of the lawmakers backed him. So of it course, wasn't that... Of, uh, of course, when the president wants, uh, has an agenda, definitely he will get what he wants. Because uh, in, in a setting like Nigeria, where we're not practicing democracy the way, the way it should, the way it is practiced in the U.S. or the way it is practiced in the U.K., our kind of democracy is very peculiar. Mm. And it is even shocking and surprising that democracy is actually working in the fashion that we have decided to des design it and to operate it. Because this is not how to operate a democracy. A democracy is operated in an open setting. If a member of the chamber raises an allegation mm. that touches on the integrity of that institution, mm. it should be a thing of joy, a thing of interest that the Senate allows that person to ventilate, to ventilate his, his uh, mm. I mean, to bring out his, uh, mm. yes, to be able to establish or to even end up burying himself. Mm. It, is the, it is the duty of the Senate to allow him to, to speak. Yeah. So when he speaks and you think you have superior arguments against his own, mm. it is now your word against his word. Yeah. Like what? Everybody watches, I mean, most people watches international television stations. Uh, well, if you call it, it international, debates, maybe yeah. because it comes from the, uh, the advanced societies. <laughs> mm. If you watch Sky News, you will see where the, that particular TV station focuses so much on the parliament, mm. the UK parliament, mm. and you see the kind of robust mm. debates yeah. that go on in that chambers, mm. to an extent that even when the prime minister, uh, you, you know, is speaking, mm. he's sometimes interrupted, yeah. and all kinds of things, mm. all kinds of um, uh, derogatory statements are even made mm. they, uh, against themselves. Mm. Right. Yes. Okay, well, the, 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 we have uh, the issues are, are many. Otherwise, yes. we, would have, we could go on. This this could be another uh, topic on its own. Uh, but then let's take the second tidbit. Oh, you know, uh, a prominent uh, Islamic cleric, uh, Sheikh Gumi, uh, again offered to be uh, part of the negotiations, like, or, or spearhead a ne negotiation between the government and bandits who have kidnapped this uh, almost 300 uh, uh, students of, of this primary school and uh, uh, secondary school in Kuriga in Kaduna State. Um, what do you make up with this letters advancement, or if let us offer by the Sheikh? Uh, I think it's, not, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's not something that anybody should even think about mm. or should accept. Mm. Because I don't understand why such a very educated uh, Nigerian, who was even, he was once in the a military armed forces. officer. He right. was a, military, a senior military officer. That's right. You know, he left as, as either a as captain, captain or a major or whatever. Right. So I don't expect a person of such uh, high-valued uh, education and exposure 
to be the one that will be conversing for such a thing. And he didn't even make any effort to condemn the act of kidnapping those children. What have those children done? What, have, what is the offense of little children in the North to have been enrolled in school? Who is against education of Northerners? Because mm. this is this should be a fundamental. This question. is something that is very, very huge. It's a huge problem that the Northerners really need to uh, uh, look at it. Because if you have your elites from the North, I know a lot of a, a lot of Northern, uh, in fact, House of Flanny mm. Northerners mm. that are schooling in different sophisticated institutions in the mm. West. That's right. I've met so many of them. Mm. Each time I travel to, let me even call the particular, the peculiar place we travel often, uh, London. Mm. Each time you travel to London, you see a lot of uh, Northerners yeah. that are That's schooling. Yeah. These are not just ordinary, uh, you know, uh, street schools. side uh, schools. These are very expensive schools. Okay. So who exactly does not want children of the poor, mm. the small, small children, the Almagiris, and all mm. these uh, children of civil Especially servants, the basic children of level, teachers to public go to school. Yeah. And then you have a very respected Islamic scholar offering himself to negotiate with the people who, who uh, go about kidnapping those students, disrupting their studies, and even killing some in the process. Mm. But perhaps he said, uh, perhaps maybe there, there is no option other than to negotiate there, there if, if the state has failed to address it. Yeah, the state, if the state has failed, if the government has failed, what I expect a scholar to do is to call for the resignation of the government. If the government cannot protect us, the government should resign. Mm -hmm. it's, it's as simple as that. The Constitution provides, you read it. Yeah, we're, we're coming to that, yeah. 14 to it's B. part of our conversation. 14 to B of the Constitution mm -hmm. is very, very fundamental. Mm -hmm. That is the primary duty of a government. Mm -hmm. The primary duty of a government is to protect citizens, mm -hmm. their lives, their property from violence, mm. from being from being eliminated. Mm. And let me tell you, the right to life yeah. is a very fundamental uh, right. You know, human right. And it's the only right that the moment it is taken away, mm. no amount of judgment can bring back can bring it a back. life that has been lost. In some cases, so what happens to those children? Talking about compensation and all of that. Exactly. What happens to the children that have been killed because they went to they went to search in such of a uh, in such of education, right. such a Western education. Mm. Why should you kill those children? Why should you take them into the bush? Mm. What is the problem? What is the problem of the children and the bandits? Mm. You know? Yeah. So it's a problem of uh, law and order. Mm. So, so you think the, yeah. the, the call, if you like, or the, uh, the, the intervention is trying to provide is counterproductive? I support the governor of Cardona State, mm. that, uh, young, I mean, that young, young guy, the senator, mm. to have rejected that call. Person. Yes. Mm. Well, Obasani is very exposed. He's very, very exposed. He's mm. even a civil rights. He used to be, he used to be yeah, before he crossed over to the other side. Mm. He used to be a civil rights activist. He used to be on our own side That's before it. he left and uh, joined the elite. So, but his, his uh, answer to that, because I think yeah. people who are trying to push uh, the Islamic clerics position mm. to the front burner mm. of national discourse had already this more good that story into the papers. It was already in the papers that the Cardinal State government mm. has already hired a private negotiator. Mm. Yeah, even, though somebody that is working, even though they rejected yes, that. Either somebody that is working with him mm. or somebody who is interested in gaining some kind of commission because mm. they're not going to negotiate for free. Ne working for government, negotiating for free, or even joining a panel of set up by a government is not for free. Nothing is for free in Nigeria. Nobody yeah. joins any committee in Nigeria that's not paid. Mm. So joining committees in Nigeria, running committees in Nigeria is even more expensive than running mm. commissions. Yeah, but he drew a conclusion, if you like, or a, a comparative analysis saying that the government should adopt, I mean, or should, should go with um, what happened, you know, during the abduction of the... Uh, the passengers of the train, Kaduna bound train, you know, uh, where the same cleric uh, intervened and then a number of uh, those abducted were released. Uh, he did mention that uh, the present administration should not hold the line of President Buhari uh, for not opening a window, if you like, or, I mean, a channel of discussion uh, with these with this non-state actors. But even that negotiation that he talked about, how did it end up? How did one of those chief negotiators end up? Is, is, he, not, is he not still in? Uh, I don't know if he's out it's by now. I don't know if he has been able to be released by court. Yeah. Mm. Or because he was captured by, he was arrested by DSS. Mm. And a lot of allegations were made against him. Mm. They were taken to court. I don't know how the court has gone about mm. that. I think the matter case. is still on anyway. Yes, mm. you understand. So using that, that, mm. that, I mean, that as an example is even totally wrong because already the government itself has rubbished that process. The government has rubbished the process. The government that used part of the process mm. to bring out the people at the time they, they did it 
have already successfully mm. in their own thinking, thinking of government. Some of us don't know exactly what, what has happened, yeah. maybe until they call to decide. Mm. Mm. You know, and they made a rule of allegation against the guy that he used it to, uh, to, uh, to enrich himself. Mm. So, mm. the issue is this. Mm. If a government that we have elected to govern us is incapable of governing Nigeria, Somebody is trying to use the example of uh, Buhari. Buhari was in government. Yeah, that's, Buhari, the, that's the nested wasn't, bit we're talking was about. He in power. He wasn't, he wasn't mm. really there. He was always, uh, uh, ever often in hospitals, either from hospital to the next. He wasn't ever present. Yeah. Everything that is done, you can see the, the repercussions. You can see the problem we're having now, yeah. that a lot of things were done by the CPN governor without his approval, without him even knowing, which means so many things went on under him that he does not know about because he was never there. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So okay. Nobody should even use that example right. as so, a good example. Yeah, since you've jumped into that, I think yeah. that, that's the, the last tidbit uh, yeah. before our conversation. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure we are referring to the statement made by the former president that yes. uh, the incumbent president, Bola Tinubu, is doing well, that uh, governing a, 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 a country like Nigeria is complex, you know, and, and, uh, and there's nothing... Somebody can do, I mean, uh, even bet any better than what is happening. You know, it's only somebody who is, who is a trounce, who doesn't attend classes in primary school or secondary school or university, I just managed to pass through, a, uh, pass through to, to the school system that we reason like that. It's a fallacy to say that Nigeria is a very complex place to govern. Why did you come out to contest for election if you know Nigeria is so complex to govern? If you're incapable of governing the country, why did you, why did you fight tooth and nail, even at the point of, Rixing your own life, even when Tribu was practically very sick. He was sick. He has regained his health since he won the election. Mm. He just regained his health. It was like a miraculous kind of uh, healing mm. that he got. But yeah, before but, the, during but, the campaign, he was always uh, in and out of hospitals. You understand? To tell you how determined he was to win the election. He's a human being. And, and, and he no, what, I'm trying, to, what I'm trying to paint mm. is to paint the picture of how determined he was, mm. the kind of zeal he showed, that he wanted to solve Nigeria's problem. Mm. So if you want to solve Nigeria's problem and you get into office mm. and your immediate uh, predecessor is trying to justify the fact that the country is not being well run, probably because his own government, when he was in government, his own government was a total misadventure, mm. was a total, a, 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 a colossal failure. The, the immediate past government for eight years, for eight years was just, the only thing that you can say was okay was that fuel, the cost of fuel, stability was, like, of the price. There, there was stability in the price of fuel, mm. but now we're knowing how that stability came about. Mm. Okay, how, but, how they are printing that and sharing among themselves. Okay. But, but then the point he was making is that, uh, you know, it is complex and then there isn't anything much somebody can do. Uh, but if you look at the trajectory, you know, yes. right from the previous uh, administrations, from, from the uh, Obasanjo administration down to the late mm -hmm. Eradua, down to the Jonathan, yes. and all of that. Each passing government, you know, uh, I mean, succeeding government, uh, be, you know, become, become worse than, you know, or rather exacerbate the situation, you know, yeah, even worse the, than the, it Nigeria is not, Nigeria, Nigeria is one of the best countries in the world to govern because Nigerians, Nigerians, I've never seen the, the type of creatures that have been gathered into a particular space, mm. Nigerian space, like the way we are, we're so very okay with whatever government is doing. Mm. Nobody asks questions. Even those of us who ask questions from time to time, people see us like, these guys are just troublemakers. Why are you troubling the government? Nigerians, Nigerians are very, very peaceful, very okay. Mm. They, are, they are easily convinced. Mm. During the elections, you give them small, small bags of uh, rice, give them small, small bags of salt, but isn't that, and they forget about the problems. Isn't that, that the have, level of the, isn't that the level of docility that takes us to where we are today? That is the point. So mm. what I'm saying is this. It is not right for the immediate past government uh, president to say that Nigeria is a complex place. Nigeria, if Nigeria is as complex as he's thinking, he would have been thrown, thrown out from government. Mm. The moment he spent four good months. Mm. I've been mean, forgotten that he, he spent four months in the hospital. Mm. There's no country anywhere in the world, not even in the Banana Republic, will you allow the president of a head of state of that country to spend that period, long period of time in a hospital? 
Yeah. They were asking him to just go and take, mm. take a vacation. Even though he has transmitted power as required by the constitution to his uh, deputy, I mean to his no, vice. No, no. What, what, the, what the parliament ought to have done was initiate his impeachment because he is not, he's not, he wasn't really fit. Mm. He wasn't really fit. Mm. Okay. Let's, we're let's... all humans, so nobody should, well, I'm not trying to politicize mm. his illness or whatever. Everybody is, nobody, nobody is 100% healthy. Uh -huh. You must have one sickness or the other. Right. But even though you have some incapacitation mm. that will not allow you to execute mm. the tax, yeah, the duties, they're supposed to do, do a gift to the people. You don't come out and say it's a complex place trying to give yourself a, 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 an excuse. It's not a complex place. It's a very, very beautiful country to govern because yeah. the people are always ready to accept whatever decision you want to make for them. Mm. And you're able to convince them just a little bit of conviction. Some said all they need is just an enabling environment. Exactly. Allow them to flourish. Exactly. And, and, and that's it. Exactly. Right. Okay, so let's go into our conversation uh, proper. Uh, looking at our topic today, we're looking at... Uh, uh, you know, the fundamental rights and how they can be enforced. Um, you started with the, the, the section 14, subsection 2, two there about, mm -hmm. you know, what's clearly spelled out. The primary responsibility of every government is to provide security and welfare of the citizens. Yes. And here we are, you know, with a country or with the citizens that are lacking these two key components. Yeah. Security, uh, you know, has become, uh, I mean, elusive so to yeah, speak yeah. and then the welfare is also not guaranteed people are suffering there's hunger and all of that so what happened in this kind of situation if we if primary responsibilities of government uh, are, you know cannot be achieved i i think well i'm not very hopeful i'm not very optimistic that mm. the the current attempt by the national assembly to further amend the constitution mm. is going to resolve any of those issues mm. but Going by the public notice that was advertised in some newspapers today, I read, I read a version that was used in this day, mm. where they itemize, uh, you know, the thematic areas of focus mm. for the, for the uh, yeah, constitutional yeah. amendment. Right. And some of those things you mentioned were all listed out. Like, the most important one is this issue of fundamental objectives of state policy, mm. which is in uh, uh, chapter two four. of the constitution. Y yes. If you look at chapter two of the constitution, and you look at chapter four of the constitution, mm. how come that chapter four of the constitution, the provisions of the chapter four of the constitution are binding mm. on government, but chapter two of the constitution, they will tell you, well, uh, it's just a uh, matter of policy. Yeah, just a matter state of policy. policy. Yes. It, sh it shouldn't be a matter of policy. It should be a matter of obligation. Mm. The right to quality education of our children mm should be legalized. Yeah. Like, like it is in other climes, you know. Yeah. Uh, if it's a fundamental right that is enforceable. Like in, yeah, exactly. yeah. The difference like in, is in that Africa, in Nigeria right. it is not enforceable. You know, in South Africa, the right to housing, hmm. or India, the right to housing is enforceable. If you are reduced to the level that a lot of us have been reduced to, even in this town, even in Abuja now, the landlords, hmm. the landlords have reduced all of us who are paying rent to the level of uh, impoverishment, hmm. to an extent that <laughs> so many people are becoming homeless in Abuja, That's this right. capital Abuja that all of us built. Mm. If it were in India or South Africa, you have the right to go to court and tell government that government, you have an obligation to provide me Housing. with a yeah. shelter. Mm. As a citizen of this country, you cannot allow me to just be on the street. Mm. Maybe because I'm unable to pay the high, high... So government will not be compelled mm. to introduce some kind of legal frameworks mm. that will not permit landlords to okay, charge yeah. indiscriminately uh, house rents, yeah. you know. So, looking at that chapter two of the constitution, and trying to make the some of the provisions. You, you cannot make all the provisions because if you make all the provisions in chapter two mm. uh, legally enforceable, it may be impracticable because mm. they will tell you the country doesn't have that kind of money to be able to to be able to realize so many of those things. Like the issue of um, mm. if you look at that chapter two, there are yeah. provisions in, the, uh, in that chapter two. I think it's either chapter 16 or 16 or thereabouts or 14. 14. No, no, if you go to chapter, mm. there's a particular uh, uh, section mm. in that chapter 2 mm. that if it is practically enforced in Nigeria, mm. virtually everybody in Nigeria will be very okay. Just like how mm. Saudi Arabians are okay. That's right. I had in Saudi Arabia, most uh, adult male have... Mm. Uh, you, you know, uh, houses to themselves, to their own names. Mm. Everybody, I was told, uh, I, I read yeah. in some publications. It also happened in Libya. That, uh, yeah, point. the countries where everybody, mm. every man. So that's how Nigeria yeah. was actually modeled. That constitution, if you look at this. As it, a uh, graduate, you graduate with I a mean, home, you know. But we're not implementing most of those things. Mm. And the only way they get out of it, 
is to tell you that well, those things are just uh, a matter of a matter of policy. Well, we will look at that when we return from the break. Yes. Uh, uh, ju just started now because we, we we have to look at this. Um, I mean, uh, the provisions of the constitution very closely and how you know they can be. I mean, implemented in Nigeria and then the challenges militating against implementation uh, and what need to be done. You know. Uh, to get out of it. Uh, in case you're just joining us, the program is Daily Politics. And uh, we have in the studio Comrade Emmanuel Omobiko, uh, who is the National Coordinator, uh, Human Rights uh, Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa. Um, we'll take a break. When we return, our conversation continues. Stay with us. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us. You can do well by joining us across our social media platforms. You can also watch us live on YouTube. And today our talking point is, of course, um, security and education and, um, you know, how to implement uh, this or get leadership accountable to this fundamental human rights. And I have in the studio uh, Comrade Emmanuel Umubiko, uh, the National Coordinator, uh, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. Now we're back, uh, Comrade. Thank uh, you very before much. the break, you're looking yes. at, uh, uh, you know, some of these fundamental rights, especially... Yeah. Uh, in respect to how they can better the life of the citizens and why, um, you know, it's a bit difficult to implement them in Nigeria. Uh, they are under state policy, a matter of state policy that is um, obligatory, so to speak, uh, not enforceable as it mm -hmm. is in other climes where gov people can, can take the government, I mean, can, can, can yeah. sue the government yes. if it fails to provide. But then security and welfare, these are fundamental. Yes. These are the terms, so to speak, uh, for the engagement yes, yes. You know, between the citizens and the leadership. And the contractual agreement is to provide you know, security and welfare. Yes. And in an event, you know, government failed to do this. Is there, I mean, a window? Can anybody take the government I mean, to account or, or make the government to account for this? Well, ideally, democracy, constitutional democracy has been well structured in such a way that the three arms of government are, are allotted or allocated mm, their constitutional responsibilities and functions. That's right. If Nigeria is running a proper democracy, that's why I said the kind of democracy we practice in Nigeria is very, very peculiar, mm. and that it, it is even miraculous that the democracy is still working. Maybe that's why from time to time, those who are elected into uh, government offices are not very comfortable. They don't sit very, very comfort comfortably in the offices. They are either losing around to hear who is calling who is for making cool. noise? <laughs> Nami, who is calling for cool? They're always not too sure of themselves. Mm. If you're actually de delivering democracy dividends, there will be no need for anybody to go to the press and say, I I'm loyal to the press, I'm a military general, I'm loyal to the president. The military general does not have to go to the press. Mm. Nigeria is the only place in the whole world where you see military generals, chief of uh, chief of so and so staff, chief of that, chief of that. Mm. They are every time in the media mm. talking. You don't hear the chief of whoever staff or whatever. In the UK, nobody even knows who is chief of Naval, whatever, or chief of whatever you see. Mm -hmm. You can even go all over UK, you will not see a single soldier. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are days you even go to UK, you will not see soldier. Mm -hmm. That's perhaps where institutions so you are to, working. To, even in China, mm -hmm. where we think that China is a totalitarian yeah. kind of uh, society, set, uh, you know, setting. I was in Beijing for like for some days. I can tell you, I didn't see one single policeman on the road. You don't see police people uh, waving guns and everything, but you don't see crime. You don't hear about crime. Mm. You can even open your door and sleep and nobody's going to uh, uh, go there because, because of the, 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 the way they have secured their environment, mm. the system CCTV is working, and the rest. Mm. So you must have a government in place. The Constitution has made it very clear that the primary duty mm. is not just, you cannot just use some kind of semantics mm. to try to, to, try to uh, dissipate the philosophy of that concept. Mm. The primary duty of government is the provision mm. of security of lives and property mm. of the citizens. It is the duty of government that you must do everything possible within your powers mm. to ensure that armed bandits do not infiltrate a school environment mm. and kidnap children who are only there to better their lives educationally. Mm. And which is their own their right. Their own also. civil right. Mm. If a government is unable to do that, the next best option for that government is to resign, is to leave. To quit. I don't know why Nigerians are so scared of mm. asking their governors, asking their senators, or even 
uh, moving for a recall because some of these things that are happening, like in the Senate, are uh, things that the constituents are supposed to begin to uh, look at the possibilities of recalling some of these. Their senators. Well, we all know them. how cumbersome the recall yes. uh, mechanism is in Nigeria. Yes. Yes. You know how yes. complex it is to yes. get someone recalled. Yeah. Uh, but the National Assembly, you are talking about, you know, shared responsibilities. Yeah. The uh, National yeah. Assembly, uh, Assembly yeah, that's what I'm saying. responsibility yeah, yes. Yeah. is, to, land. is mm. to oversight, is to check met the excesses of the executive. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Where the executive has failed to provide this fundamental rights. It is or perform these fundamental responsibilities, uh, you know, there, there, there should be some leadership accountability there, there should, you know, there demand should. on the National there Assembly. Mm. So, but why are we not having this? Well, I have said it times without number, that the reason why we don't find such kind of accountability with this present legislature at the national level, in fact, the National Legislature, the National Assembly is as, as bad as any other state house of assembly that you can find. You know, state house of assembly, like in my state, Imo state, the state house of assembly, you cannot be a member of the state house of assembly if you're not one of the eight of the governor. If you're not one of those who, who runs around the governor in, his, in the restaurant serving him, I mean, in his own uh, bedroom serving him. If you don't serve him, the governor, you cannot be a house of rep member, a house of assembly. So, if so you are saying that it's dominated by the yes men of the government. The yes men of the government. That is, the yes men of the government are the ones dominating the national assembly today. Hmm. It, has, it has been there. Ever since Saraki left, the National Assembly died. The moment Saraki, Saraki's uh, uh, it assembly, you know. is it? Is it? Exactly. It the moment though that particular National Assembly left, mm -hmm. the National Assembly that was there that Buhari didn't sleep for a day. That was the National Assembly that Buhari could not sleep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, in fact, for the first time in the history of this country, they had to send over a hundred hooded DSS operatives. I don't know whether you, you we have forgotten that there was a time we woke up. Mm -hmm. Some of us who drive through that federal secretariat to go to our office couldn't even drive through because mm -hmm. DSS have taking over the entire vicinity of the National Assembly. But what was you the, got to that level. Yeah, but what was because the result of the altercation, the, the, the lack of harmony between the national and the, the, the legislature and the executive? Yes, the disagreement, the, 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 the disagreement of the senators to allow the president to nominate their leader for them, their leadership for them. They wanted to nominate their own leadership. Yeah. And because well, yeah, those who what, were yeah. against uh, being, uh, having imposition, yeah. uh, you know, were able to overwhelm those who were on the side of the executive arm of government. There are a lot of that, interest, they didn't know. give them peace. There, there was no stability at all. They yes. didn't allow Saraki to actually... No, but I was talking about in terms of achievement, in terms of results. Some say in an atmosphere of uh, disagreement or rancor or this, I mean, constant conflict between the, the, the executive and the legislature, you don't find the result. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the excuses always advanced, that in a collaborative kind of uh, uh, setting, a democratic setting, you will be able to achieve the result. Well... Separation of powers, separation of, uh, the mm. principle of separation of power did not say that each arm of the government should be antagonistic to each other. Mm. The only thing it says is that every arm mm. should have its own duty, mm. should make sure that the other arm does not control it. Yeah. The so checks and balances have to checks be Checks and balances have to be there okay, because yeah. the moment you allow the executive to control the legislature, mm. that is the reason why we, we, are, where we are where we are because mm. you cannot even, uh, uh, you, you can't even say exactly. Who are, you going to, who are you going to hold into account? Okay. When security of the nation is being endangered, and have you ever heard that a particular director of DSS or commissioner of police or GOC or so and so person has been fired because, because bandits went to a school and kidnapped? You know, so it doesn't under happen his, in Nigeria. Under his jurisdiction. It doesn't happen in Nigeria because mm. it's only when you begin to fire and dismiss mm. people yeah. Um, it's not even at the level of chief of, take the chief of army. It's not, it's not a level of chief of uh, yeah. army staff or chief of uh, defense staff. No, even at that, my, uh, that very micro lo level. localized level, mm. micro level, mm. you are you are unable to to maintain mm. stability and security in your area of jurisdiction. Mm. You should be fired. Yeah. Okay. Still looking at this rights we're talking yes. about. You know, um, the, the the challenge is that the the, the laws are there, the, the the provisions are there, but they are not enforceable. Uh, take for instance the issue of basic education. Yes. Um, we're talking about how, you know, or, or non-state actors were able to infiltrate, invaded schools, and then kidnap children who fundamentally they have rights to life. They have rights you know, uh, to, to security. They also ri have rights to basic education. Yes. And all of this is denied. Yeah. And in a situation where, I mean, uh, nobody, I mean, there's no clear-cut sanctions, if you like, or clear-cut 
leadership accountability yes, mechanism yes. Uh, to get the leadership to do this, either at the national or at the subnational level, that is at the state level. Um, how do we address this gap now? Because it has been affecting us as a country. Uh, it has, I mean, um, drastically affect, affected education. You yes. know, the lives yes. of people are involved, their livelihoods, and so on. Yeah, it's even got to a level, I think during the last administration, where you have some female students were taken away from one of the schools in either... A number of schools. Uh, yes. In Chibok, in Dapchi, in yes. FGGC, yes. and, and a number. The, the one that even happened somewhere, somewhere very close to Sokoto. Yeah, they stayed before Kosovo. Yes, they took them, yeah. and I, I don't. I don't think those girls are out now. I don't know. I don't know if all of them have been have been released. Yeah. You can't have this kind of system going on. You can't have this kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, failed, a failed kind of government mm -hmm. because the if the government lacks the ability, the capacity to protect even the most vulnerable, you know, set of people in the society, mm -hmm. the students of primary schools, students of secondary schools, yeah. and students of even higher institutions, yeah. they have been kidnapped all the time and taken into the forest, and everybody just continue with, Life oh, goes it's on. just okay. Mm -hmm. Life goes on. Yeah. That is the reason why it has continued. If Nigerians today drop that, that ghost of docility, mm -hmm. the, the, the ghost of docility, docility that has that, but how can they do that? The are, are they empowered to do that? Constitutionally yes. empowered, educationally empowered. Yes. How can they be able to ask for accountability? They will do that because there was a time Nigerians were becoming very, very, very vocal in the social media. That's why you, when, when you found out that a lot of uh, senators and the uh, House of Reps members were sponsored by the executive arm of government to begin to, to begin to draft some kind of legislation to try to, to curtail mm -hmm. the social media rights. It, it, it's even still uh, ongoing, trying to try to try to shut up the voices of mm. the masses. You know, mm. there is nothing as harmful to a man who is in public office as having active citizens. Mm. If you have active citizens in Nigeria, 75% mm. of the bad governance that is going on in this country mm. would have disappeared a long time ago. Mm. If you have citizens who are ready to ask questions not minding the consequences. Mm. And if you have citizens who are not ready to mortgage their consciences and collect small bags of salt mm. to elect people who are not better off than rogues, ordinary rogues on the street, mm. to elect such but, a person yeah. to preside over, to make law for you. Mm. But what happened to the somebody... of poverty? You're talking about, it is someone who is <laughs> perhaps, who is terrible mentally, educationally, and of course, it's sound in mind that can even begin, begin to think about all of these rights. Uh, here we are with a citizen that is impoverished, that is, I mean... No, 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 there's no amount of schools, no amount of schools that will allow any citizen of this country, no matter how poor you are, most of us didn't come from very rich families, we didn't come from very rich families, and let me tell you, it has even become worse now. In those days, at least political parties like MPN, during the MPN mm -hmm. era and MPP mm -hmm. and the rest of the MPN, MPN was sharing things as, as, as respectable as a, this is a bike, mm -hmm. motorbike. Yeah. They were giving motorbike to their supporters, mm -hmm. to their own supporters. Mm -hmm. There was never any story or any history of political parties in those days yeah. offering voters money to vote for them. It started with this, since 1999 constitution kickstarted, that's when it started. It, it was never an issue. Mm -hmm. When some of us started voting, even at very small small level, yeah. you don't get to see people being bribed to vote. Yeah. That is a major problem that Nigerians have to really overcome. No matter how hungry you are, yeah. you're not supposed to collect 5,000 naira from a politician. Yeah. You're too cheap. Yeah. It's too cheap for any Nigerian. No matter how hungry you are to collect 5,000 naira, 5,000 naira can only afford you a pot of soup. Yeah. And if you take a pot of soup, and you put somebody into office for a day. who is going to be eating buffet and all the time. Compromise. It doesn't, doesn't make years. sense that you collect five thousand dollars to go and prepare a pot of soup, mm. and now you are putting a rogue into office who will be who will be organizing buffet for his family every other time. Mm. You don't have any right to begin to complain mm. that you are not passing a, a good loss for us and the rest of the mm. Nigerians should begin to begin to uh, ask you know, for yeah. ask questions, write questions, and demand accountability from right. those that have elected into public offices. For, for civil society organizations like yours, the mm -hmm. Huriwa, you know, the Human Rights Association, and so on, um, uh, some of these provisions of the Constitution, these rights we are talking about, are also rights that are recognized 
at the international level. Yeah. They are the international laws. They are also recognized global. I mean, at the regional level. And Nigeria is a signatory to some of these conventions. Yes. Why is it difficult for the civil society organizations to? Um, we've seen some. Uh, some, I mean, uh, some attempt, you know, just recently uh, by a human rights lawyer, Femi Falana, you know, talking about, I mean, suing the government for failing mm -hmm. to uh, provide certain things, especially looking at the, 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 the hunger that is devastating the land and all of that. Why is it difficult for people like you to champion this, to take the leadership accountable, I mean, to, to I mean, take the, it, strike this commitment? One of the strongest ways that so many of us are adopting is strategic media engagements. Even this little, you may call it little, you may think it's little, it makes a lot of impact. These interviews that you, you, you invite civil society leaders to, to express their opinions. Yeah. A lot of people in government, if they have their way, they can even pay you not to invite any of us. So speaking truth to power is as important as going to court. If I'm going to court, is even time wasting because you go to court sometime, a matter we stay in court for as long as how many months because there are a lot of matters that have been instituted. There was a particular matter we instituted against the Police Service Commission because the Police Service Commission failed to discipline the policemen who went into a church environment, into a church mm. in Imo State and kidnapped a former chief of, chief of staff to the former governor. Because the current governor of Imo State and the former governor were having political it, it issues. Is it a kidnap or arrest no, no, they are settled now. It was a kidnap because the people that invaded the church didn't even tell anybody that they were policemen because they were hooded. Mm. It, was, it was actually when they started, when they, when, they, when they were about fleeing from the church that some people saw police hilos and said, no, no, this is the police, uh, they're not kidnappers. A lot of people who were in that church that day thought they were kidnappers. Mm. So we now said, police service commission, why have you not invited any of these policemen since they have been identified as police people working for the office of the governor in Imo State. Why well, have you not invited them? Do you know that case? It took the Federal High Court over three months and they never, they never gave us a date. Hmm. It was out of, out of frustration that we had to ask our lawyer to just take off the case because it's of no use. Why will you be in court waiting for a date, hmm. for a hearing, a hearing date, and you spend as long as three months and the same things you are complaining about hmm. is, being, uh, is being continued. So if so human rights the, organizations like you would give hmm. up Mm. And I mean, I mean, find it um, difficult, frustrating, yes. you know, frustrating mm. to, to do some of this. Then what happened to the ordinary citizens? Yeah, well, there are so many ways that you can use. There are a lot of ways you can use mm. to kill a fly. You don't have to. It mustn't be just mm. a straight jacketed kind of. Particularly, mm. if you have an organ, there are organizations that are specialized in litigation, mm. like Serac. Mm -hmm. Serac is a specialized NGO that whose major operational, um, I mean, their modus operandi mm. is they're always in the court because I think most of them are lawyers. But what results are we know? getting from that? Because a number of no, cases of, have been instituted. A lot of policies, a lot of policies have come out of so many of those uh, cases they filed in court. For instance, they were, were, they were the ones that actually filed a case that made the court to nullify the power, the so-called power that they didn't even have before, NBC. Mm. They don't have the power to find any broadcasting station for, I think your session was even involved in one of those, uh, one of those times that you interviewed a uh, bandit or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the court says NBC doesn't have the power to find because NBC is not a court of law. So it was an effort. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah is making a lot of... The court system, in, in spite of the fact that it is quite slow, mm -hmm. there are so many good things that are actually happening within the court, court system. So, so it we is need more of setups now to be able to hold leadership accountable. Yes, Serap are doing that. Uh, Huriwa is doing that. So many other groups are doing that using the divergent uh, modus operandi. Mm. You know, our major modus operandi is the media. Mm. Is the media mm. speaking truth to power? Because yeah. when it's sp speaking truth to power, is like is like igniting fire mm. on their legs, on the legs of the, those who who, who are terrorizing Putting the them Nigerian on their people. Toes, right? Putting them on their toes because yeah. they, they they feel very uncomfortable. Mm. They feel very uncomfortable. When they see you speak truth to power, they are very uncomfortable. It's a very major way of doing that because there are certain things that we have done in the past that have resulted in immediate action, action. By, go by government. Yeah. For instance, this edu of a lady that was mm. suspended, when, they were, when the government was trying to do like this, like this, like this, we had to go to the press and issue a statement, this, this woman has to be fired because she has also committed the same offense, allegation mm. she has on her head, the same thing as the lady who was fired, the other lady who was fired. Yeah. So why would you fire one person and leave the other one? Yeah. 
after two days after that statement was made, mm. she, she left. Okay. And there are so, so, many so we're getting somewhere through the media. We're getting advocacy. somewhere, you know, through exactly. uh, the efforts of the civil society organizations. A lot. And, uh, a lot. Yes, but then what is also needed is perhaps those to, uh, for those. At the, at the leadership positions to also realize that they have a contractual uh, 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 um, responsibility, yes. uh, you know, to to satisfy, uh, because you know that is the terms of contractual terms of uh, exactly. engagement. Exactly. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Emmanuel Mwibiko, for talking to us on daily politics. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Emmanuel, has been the national coordinator of the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa. He's also of the former commissioner uh, in the National Human Rights Commission of Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much once again for coming. Thank you very much. Yes, right on right behalf you. of the guests and viewers, this is uh, a wrap on today's package. We sincerely hope you found the conversation engaging and informative. If you do, why don't you join us uh, tomorrow where we'll be back with another interesting personalities and topic. Until then, I'm Shapiro Suleiman. Many thanks for staying with us. Yeah.